Happy Friday and welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show on Newsmax TV. Some networks have buried the election deep into their news shows. They have moved on, accepting that Joe Biden is the president-elect, even though that has not been determined through a vote of electors. We here at Newsmax TV have kept the elections and their suspect results very much top of mind. The Trump campaign is scheduled to stop by in mere moments to update us on the effort to get to the Supreme Court well and have them do their job. One of the 18 states signing onto the lawsuit against Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Pennsylvania for violating their own election laws is Arkansas. Leslie Rutledge, Arkansas's attorney general, is scheduled to join us to give us her legal opinion on the merits of that case. MSNBC is complaining that President Trump didn't get the vaccine out fast enough. Now, is that true or fair? We'll ask Trish Regan. And the Marxist woke Pope adopting Joe Biden's campaign slogan? We'll ask our religious panel if the Vicar of Christ will also be pushing Joe Biden's pro-abortion agenda. But before we get to any of that, for those of you who watched the morning show this morning, I was confronted by an episode some of you watched go down on one of the other cable channels down the dial. Obama and Fox News Channel are finding more in common. That's the sad news I have to report in tonight's preamble. In some of the email I'm getting, folks invariably ask me, what the hell is going on over at Fox? The truth is, I don't know. I, I suspect it has something to do with the dedicated Democrats who run that channel these days. In all honesty, I thought we'd never be here. I thought we and Fox would be fighting side by side, you know, against those folks trying to, trying to wash this wave of anti-American socialism that has swallowed the Democrat Socialist Party and the rest of the biased press. Well, it's not worked out that way. It's a bit discouraging. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Last night, Fox News Channel's Geraldo Rivera launched an attack on Rush Limbaugh, asserting his words were treasonous and reckless. I think talk of succession, uh, secession is treason. Martha, I want to be very clear. Rush Limbaugh is a, a powerhouse broadcaster. He's one in a zillion. They come along once a generation. But that talk is, is reckless. It's irresponsible. That we are one nation indivisible. I, I had a laugh. Uh, Rush goes on to say that uh, people uh, where he is have no idea what people in New York are thinking. And they're so different. They're like a different species. Half of New York lives in Florida where Rush Limbaugh lives. It's preposterous. Let's get over it. Let's get over it. Okay. Uh, I didn't watch that. Uh, I was watching Newsmax TV last night, but I woke up this morning to some of the left-wing press gleefully reporting the accusation against Rush. Like many of you, I'm a fan of Rush Limbaugh professionally, ideologically, and just because of the kind of man I know he is. I knew that Geraldo had to be misrepresenting what Rush said. I never once believed that Rush Limbaugh could ever utter anything treasonous or reckless. So I did a little digging. Turns out I was right. The question that I got from Mr. Snurdly was, are we ever going to be able to win again? And I didn't know what he meant by that. And I said, I actually think, and I've referenced this, I've alluded to this a couple times because I've seen others allude to this. And I've seen quite a few people allude to this over the course of the recent months, maybe six months. I said, I think we could be trending towards secession. Hmm. It turns out I, and those of you who put your trust in Rush Limbaugh and not Fox News Channel's Geraldo Rivera, were right to trust Rush. Mr. Limbaugh was doing what he's always done. He imparted analysis of what he has been observing in the social and political currents in our land. He has built an impressive career by keeping his finger on the pulse of America better than anyone else in our society. He wasn't advocating secession. Never once did he support that idea. But through analysis, he determined that's where this country could be headed if things don't change. What I've seen, and what I think Rush is seeing too, there's a growing divide in our country. We can't agree what it means to be an American anymore. One side, the Socialist Democrats, they say that America means having your health care paid for by somebody else, getting money for sitting on your rear end and doing nothing. They believe in a weak military. They believe in giving illegal aliens the vote and taxpayer-funded benefits. 
They believe in climate agreements that disadvantage the United States, but allow the number one CO2 emitter, China, to ignore any restrictions. They believe in open borders. They believe in an all-powerful centralized government staffed with representatives that don't represent and an ever-expanding unconstitutional fourth branch of government staffed with unelected bureaucrats who have, well, a decidedly anti-American agenda. They believe in a massive and unaccountable federal leviathan that is a serial waster of taxpayers' dollars. And they are willing to jack up your taxes to any level to ensure the dominance of government over your life. They believe in doing China's bidding, so long as they and their families get paid off. They believe in riots, looting, arson, and violence to achieve their Marxist political goals. They think that defunding the police and disarming law-abiding citizens are correct courses of action. In fact, one of their high-profile influencers has teamed up with the left-wing owners of Ben & Jerry's ice cream in an effort to, quote, abolish our police. That's Colin Kaepernick. Then there is the rest of us. We believe in a limited constitutional government. We think that the 535 members of the Congress should be responsible for every single tax dollar we pay and that our government should only be as big as can be responsibly managed by our representatives. We do not believe that it's the right of our government to spend more money than we agree to give them through our taxes. We believe in a strong military ready to deter our enemies, China, Iran, and others. We believe in merit and the rights of the individual. We believe in the rule of law and that the law applies equally to everyone, even you socialist Democrats out there, regardless of color or creed. We also believe in personal responsibility. Resident Barack Hussein Obama has been pimping a book around the country you might have heard. In one interview, he lamented how white conservatives supported him at one time. Look who he blames for a loss of that support. I ended up getting enormous support in these pretty conservative, rural, largely white communities when I was a senator. And that success was repeated when I ran for president in the first race in Iowa. You know, by my second year in office, I'm not sure if I could make that same connection because now those same people are filtering me through Fox News and Rush Limbaugh and an entire conservative media infrastructure that was characterizing me in a way that suggested I looked down on those folks or I uh, had nothing in common with them. Typical left-wing extremist. As often as Barack Obama looks in the mirror, you'd think the former narcissist in chief could get a clearer picture or have at least a greater idea, some self-awareness. The reason so many people stopped supporting you, Mr. Obama, wasn't because of anybody else but you. The reason Obama lost support, folks, was because he opened his big mouth and implemented policies that told us who he really was. The media refused to vet Obama before his election. So many people were shocked to discover that he's an anti-American leftist who despises the United States and worked to prop up our enemies in Iran, Cuba, and China. But who does Obama think is responsible for his loss of popularity? Rush Limbaugh, of course. Just like Fox News Channel's Geraldo Rivera laughingly bashed Rush Limbaugh for making a fair and accurate analysis. With all due respect, Geraldo, Rush does more good for this country in one of his opening monologues than any of your socialist pals have done in their entire careers. Although I really did enjoy the contents of Al Capone's vault, it turns out your critique of Rush was just about as substantive. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.